Okay, so let's have a quick recap at what we have done in the last video. So to start with, this is a Substance Painter file that will be given to you guys so you can download and dissect everything I've done so far. So let's start in from the base. So I went in and added a bit peach tone. I had my AO multiplied which is just being multiplied in the nostrils for now. I went in, added my subsurface effect around the nose, lips and the ears. Added more red around the blood flow areas. Added more red with a bit different intensity around the faces to have the subsurface or the reddishness area around it. Started adding yellows around the places which are close to the bone. More yellow blending more of our red in the forehead. More red blending the yellow in our forehead. Adding in the grey area which is around the stubble. Decreasing the opacity giving us the blueish look in our albedo. Adding a bit more grey around the eyelids and calling that done in our layer 1. So as we have already set up from last few weeks that I'm not the best guy to name my things but I have named things here for you guys. So everything has been named according to the numbers. In the order I have created those layers and worked on it to help you guys further understand how I built it from scratch. So next up we had more red around the cheeks. Adding in the green for the stubble. Adding in the green for the head which I think I got rid of it in future but maybe I mentioned last time I like to have a bit darkness around the head even if somebody is completely bald to have a bit of a frame to this area. So we have this guy framing it in, this guy framing it in so the focus only stays here. Then added in the yellow around the neck which was I was following my reference. Then started working on the lips. So lips are a bit hard to get right as I mentioned before they either look like lipstick or a dead lip. So I started with the red which is a bit dark somewhere around here and I started with the less opacity and brought it up instead of just going from here and calling it down. So I had that around 140. Added more red to give him more blood flow. Hmm. So this one is just a slight bit around the forehead giving us the transition from red to yellow because it was getting too pinkish or reddish. Adding in more yellow around the cheekbone and things that are closer to the bone and I think I added that around the nose as well. Adding in the grey because I felt this went a bit too saturated. Adding in more grey around the cheeks because that was a bit saturated too. I would have to do a bit of this here as well or adding more red which I did afterwards but after seeing that after a day I feel it can use more red than what I actually have after finishing it. So adding more red to our lips and adding the purple. So lips are not going to be completely red. They have a bit purple or bluish tone or sometimes pinkish. So instead of having just a flat red, I added in the breakups. Giving us this look. Then let's move up. Let's open this layer. Everything is visible, so let me hide them. So I started with adding in this yellow around the wrinkles. Then this would be adding the spots. Adding more spots with a bit different layer so I can have more control on the variation. So this is where I added more red around the cheeks and the ear. 
then adding the veins to give it more subsurface feeling. We will modify this more in the next week. Adding in the stubble, giving it a blur directional where I'm directing it to the downside. Then just adding those dots again with the same mask, but this time I'm not blurring them in a direction so I can have a transition from a solid color to a bit blurish, which goes in a direction. That's it for our fifth layer. Then I think this is my cavity, which is giving us the pore information and a bit more subsurface effect on our color. Keep in mind, keep that to minimum as much as you can, because we are going to do that in the shader side. Unreal allows it, Marmoset does, but through a plugin. So if you don't have a plugin, we are going to do that inside our texture, which will be more pronounced than this one. But before wrapping things up, just keep it to a subtle where we have a bit of subsurface effect with these guys, where they are bringing back our pores. Also, uh, one more reason I added those in is if you look at Texturing XYZ or scanned color information, you will see the pores are actually darker in the albedo which is captured. Whether it's true or not in real life are if pores are darker or not, because it's the micro level of ambient occlusion inside the pores that makes us feel they are darker. Again, I don't know whether that's actual in real life, but that I mean if we take out the skin from the skull, lay it down flat. If the pores are going to be darker or not, that's something I don't know yet, but that's what I learned from experience. The rendered images or the scanned ones have pores darker. So this is what we are doing right now. For some reason, I feel that was a bit too much explained, but you guys have it right now. Uh, then we added in this guy. Not this guy, this guy. So we used our curvature map because I felt it was giving me better wrinkle extraction than the cavity map because it had a lot of pores included with wrinkles. So I used that, played with my levels and applied a anchor point with a little bit of blur on top of it because we don't want the original mask to be blurred. I used that to paint in the wrinkles. Then if you focus on our references, those wrinkles have a bit yellow tone around them. To create that, I used that mask the same way which we created the damages in our metal in the first week or the second week. And I used that to just give it yellow areas around here. Some of the places I felt were getting a bit too strong, so I went in and painted those guys in. On top of that, we have our nose, which is being more red. So I like to keep my nose a bit more red than it should be because it gives a bit more stylization. And since nose is the first thing you're going to see in a face because it pokes out the furthest, it gives it a bit more appealing feel in my opinion. This is more subjective. You guys can do it or cannot. It's up to you guys. In the last, I added in the blues to add the veins. So the face has those blue veins pronouncing a lot, especially in the forehead, sometimes around the neck, which have a bit blue tone to them. I like to make those layers or veins in my sculpt before texturing it. We can texture the red ones because they don't poke out or change the volume as much, but these ones do. So I only make them in the sculpted ones and I paint them blue. If you want to paint them by hand in substance, some of these ones, you can, but I won't advise to. Even in your personal project, if you're doing that, if you're painting those blue areas in, not painting, if you're adding those blue veins in, have that in your sculpt as well. The red ones you can pass by just by adding that inside the texture. So that's our last layer. After that, I added in uh, HSL Perceptive to change my saturation and hue. I felt it was getting a bit too dark and too saturated, so I changed that. So this is how far we got on in this week and this is how far you guys should be to get to a point where our skin looks like skin. 
Rest of the finishing, rest of the additional details will be done in the next week, including creating additional maps to help our shader. On top of this, I just have a roughness one to control my roughness globally. So instead of changing roughness in every single one, I have a master layer for roughness which changes it. Including that, this one is also controlling. I have no idea what's happening here, but it's also controlling our scatter. So to add a subsurface effect in uh, Substance Painter, as I said, it's not a good one if you're comparing that to Marmoset or Unreal. But if you want to look dev your things inside Substance Painter sometime, it's a pretty neat thing. So to enable that, you have to go to your shader and make sure your skin is on. Your color by default should be fine. I made it a bit red-ish. The scale describe how far it's subsurface. So let's change this. Let's change that. So how far it goes in. And you will have to add in your channel a scattering and that scatter will control how much scatter is happening. Also, one important thing to see that in your display, you have to go to your display. And if you scroll down, you're going to see active subsurface scattering. So if you have this turned on off, which is by default, it is, you're not going to see any subsurface. All right. So that's it for the recap of our skin. Again, you guys have the scene provided to, provided to you guys. So just go in, turn off every layers and turn it on again to see what I was thinking or doing. And hope that helps you guys.